Hello, welcome back to Cardinal Science for this first video on organic chemistry. So we'll be continuing on with our Edexcel IGCSE Chemistry 2017 specification today, looking at points 4.1 to 4.4. We'll first introduce what a hydrocarbon is. We'll look at how to represent organic molecules in several different types of formulae. We'll look at homologous series, functional groups and isomerism. And then we'll look at how to name organic molecules. So the first thing you need to know for organic chemistry is what a hydrocarbon is and why we refer to certain molecules as being organic. So to start with, and very simply, a hydrocarbon is a substance that contains only hydrogen and carbon atoms. So for example, I'll give you methane, CH4, which I represent like this, showing the covalent bonds between the carbon and four hydrogens. As you can see, there are only carbons and hydrogens in this molecule. Another example might be ethene, where you've got two carbons and four hydrogens. Very simple, only hydrogens and carbons. Now, in this course, you'll also come across organic molecules. Now, hydrocarbons and organic molecules are very, very similar. An organic substance is one that just generally contains carbon and hydrogen bonds. So a molecule that would be organic, but not a hydrocarbon, would be, for example, an alcohol. In this case, I'm drawing ethanol, where you might have an OH group on the right-hand side there. And of course, the presence of that oxygen means that this molecule is not a hydrocarbon, but because it does have carbon-hydrogen bonds in it, it is organic. So there are five ways that we need to know how to represent organic molecules and hydrocarbons in this course with empirical formulae, molecular, general, structural, and displayed. Now, I know it sounds like a lot, but we'll go through each one, one by one, and I'll explain as we go. So we've seen empirical formulae before in a previous video, where we looked at how to calculate empirical formulae along with percentage yield. For this specification point, we need to know how to deduce empirical formulae from molecular formulae. So if I give you the molecular formula of butane, c 4 h 12, we need to try to figure out the simplest ratio between the carbons and the hydrogens. So we have four carbons and 12 hydrogens. If we decide to divide both sides by four, then we simplify down to one to three. Therefore, the empirical formula of butane is CH3. Now, what if we had something like pentene, C5H10? We would do the same thing. We set out our ratio, C to H, and we would write down how many of each we have, five carbons, 10 hydrogens, and then we would simplify down. Dividing each side by one gives us one to two. Therefore, the empirical formula for the molecule of pentene is CH2. The molecular formula is probably the one you've been most familiar with already. It's the one that shows the actual molecular structure of the substance whereby we show the number of each atom that are present in a molecule. So, for example, you'll have seen things like CO2. That's a molecular formula of carbon dioxide. Now, that's not an organic molecule. But for organic molecules, you might have something like CH4 or C2H6. In each case, we're showing how many there are of each atom. So in C2H6, we have two carbons and six hydrogens. In CH4, we have one carbon and four hydrogens. Now the general formulae is one that people get a bit confused about. So general formulae are mathematical equations that we use to represent the pattern in the structure of a group of organic substances. Now there are only two that you need to know anyway for this course, and we'll cover those when we cover alkanes and alkenes. However, I will show you them now anyway. So there are a group of organic molecules called alkanes, and there's another group of them called alkenes. Now the general formula of alkanes is C N H 2 N plus two. This means that for any number of carbons in the alkanes, you can figure out how many hydrogens you have. So for example, if I had a two carbon chain, so if I have C two, I know that the number of hydrogens is twice that plus two. So two times two is equal four, plus two makes six. Or if I wanted to know how many hydrogens I'd have in a 12 carbon chain, Multiply 12 by 2, get 24, add 2, 26, and so on. So there's our general formula for the alkanes. Now for alkenes, it's slightly different, but again, very easy. In fact, 
even simpler. And in the case of the alkenes, we've got Cn, H, 2n. So for any number of carbons in the chain, we have twice as many hydrogens. So we have C4, H8, C2, H4, C100, H200, and so on. So you can see, given these two general formulae, we can figure out the molecular formula of any alkane or alkene. The last two, structural formulae and displayed formulae, are often confused. Structural formula shows the arrangement of the atoms in a molecule without showing any of the bonds. So if we have butane, C4H10, what we do to show the structural formula is we say CH3, there's a first carbon that has three hydrogens attached to it. The second carbon has got two. The next carbon has also got two. And the last carbon has got three. And of course, if we counted up the atoms there, we'd see we had four carbons and 10 hydrogens. So that is our structural formula. So we've converted from a molecular formula to a structural formula. And of course, we could then convert to any of the other types of formula. So here's the displayed formula then, not to be confused with the structural. Displayed formula displays all of the bonds in the molecule. Okay, so for the same example, we had C4H10. Okay, our structural formula was CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. But our displayed formula will look like this. C, and we draw all of the bonds, H, H, H. So that's our CH3. Then we've got a CH2. Then we've got another CH2. Then we've got a CH3. So we can see how we've gone from molecular formula here, where we can see the number of atoms in the molecule, to the structural formula, where we can see the structure but not the bonds, to the displayed formula, where we can see the structure and the bonds. So for now, a good idea is to do some practice. We want to practice converting between molecular formula, structural formula, and displayed formula. So we'll start with CH4. Now the structural formula is already done for us actually because there's only one carbon and in structural formula we show how many hydrogens there are bonded to each carbon, so it's CH4. The displayed formula, we show the four covalent bonds between the carbon and the hydrogens. For the second one, we do C2H6, which means we have CH3 and CH3. And of course this looks like this, with each carbon bonded to three hydrogens and of course a single bond between the two carbons. The last one, C3H8, is going to be CH3, CH2, CH3. And we're going to have three carbons surrounded by hydrogens. Now you can see that the carbon in the middle is only bonded to two hydrogens because of course it's got two single bonds to carbon atoms. And we're finished. Homologous series are really important in organic chemistry. They're groups of organic molecules that follow the same general formula that like we covered earlier, and they tend to differ just by the number of CH2 groups in the middle of the molecule. So, for example, speaking about alkanes that we looked at earlier, their general formula was CnH2n plus 2. Therefore, any alkane would follow that formula. And the molecules only tend to differ by CH2 groups. So for example, going from the second alkane, which is this one, which is called ethane, to the third alkane, which is called propane, we can see that the only real difference between them is the fact that we've got a CH2 group in the middle, right here. Now, if I were to show you the fourth one, I'll do this below, we end up with four carbons, and you can see all I've really done is added an extra CH2 group in the middle. The same would happen for any length of chain of alkanes. So as you can see in the middle here, we have this CH2 group and we have this CH2 group. So on either end, we have CH3s, and then we just have a chain of CH2 groups in the middle. Functional groups is something that you'll understand a lot better once you've studied a lot more organic chemistry. 
once you've looked at some of the different homologous series that this course contains. However, I'll explain it now anyway. So a functional group is a collection of atoms within a molecule that represents the area where most of the characteristic reactions of that homologous series happen. For example, in the homologous series, the alkenes, the functional group is the carbon-carbon double bond. So I'll indicate the functional group here with blue. So there's our functional group. If I was looking at the homologous series alcohols, here's ethanol. The functional group would be the OH group on the right hand side, where the characteristic reactions of alcohols occurs. And finally, for another example, one that you'll see a lot later, is a carboxylic acid. Here, the functional group is the C double bond O, single bond OH. This is this end of the molecule where the characteristic reactions of carboxylic acids occur. Another common concept within organic chemistry is isomerism. Now there are several different types of this and you'll come into these when you study A level. However, for now, we're gonna look at something called structural isomers. So these are organic compounds that have the same molecular formula, but have different displayed formulae. Okay, so for example, if we have uh, butane, C4H10, I could draw this as a nice single chain with hydrogens bonding around the outside. Okay, so there's my displayed form of butane. Or with exactly the same number of carbons and hydrogens, I could draw something slightly different. Okay, so you can see we have four carbons still, and we have 10 hydrogens. So we have the same molecular formula. Both of these are C4H10. However, they have different displayed formulae, because of course, you can see there's a different structure here. Okay, so let's do a bit more practice on this one then. On the screen, we've got pentane, C5H12. We'll draw the displayed formula and then see if we can come up with some structural isomers of it. So pause the video now, have a go, and then compare yours to ours. All right, here we go. So the displayed formula, best thing to do is to draw your carbons in a line. That's five carbons with 12 hydrogens around it. You've got CH3 on either end. And then you've got CH2 groups between them. And if you count up the hydrogens, there should be 12 of them and five carbons. Now, we need to draw a molecule that has the same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens, but slightly different displayed formula. So one example is this molecule here. Where all of the carbons except for one have got CH3 groups on. If you count them, you'll see that we have 12 hydrogens and five carbons still. Alternatively, you could have had something like this. We have a CH3 group there. Again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve hydrogens. So you can see we have the same number of each atom but they have a different displayed formula. Okay, so finally, it's important we know how to name organic compounds because internationally, people need to know what we're talking about, that we're talking about the same thing. So we follow the IUPAC rules. This is just an international governing body. Now, the way this works is every organic compound is comprised of a prefix and a suffix in its name. Now, the prefix for you only provides that you need to know them between one and six. So for carbon chains between one and six carbons long. And the prefix for one carbon is meth or meth. For two, eth, three, probe, four, bute, five, pent, and six, hex. So really, the first four are the only strange ones. After that, it's the same as they would be if they were polygons in maths. Okay, so meth, eth, probe, bute, one, two, three, four. And then for the suffix, depending on the functional group or the homologous series, you can add on the correct suffix. So if you have an alkane, 
made of three carbons, then it would be propane, because you would take the prop from the prefix, because of three carbons, and ane, because it was an alkane. If you had a five carbon alcohol, it would be pentanol, because you would take the pent from the prefix and the anol from the suffix, and that would make pentanol. Right, so let's do some examples of some practice. So pause the video and see if you can name these four molecules. Okay, let's go through the answers. So you've got a molecule that's two carbons long and it's an alcohol. So therefore its prefix is eth or eth and the suffix is going to be anol because it's an alcohol, so it becomes ethanol. If it's four carbons long and it's a carboxylic acid, it has the prefix bute and you add on the suffix anoic acid and there you have it, butanoic acid. For number three, it's one carbon long, so its prefix is going to be meth or meth. And then of course, it's an alcohol, so it ends in anol, so it becomes methanol. For the fourth one, you've got three carbons, and so therefore its prefix is going to be prop, and it's an alkene, so it will end in ene, so it becomes propene. Okay, so we've covered quite a lot so far. And really, this is just the fundamental building blocks of organic chemistry. But how do we examine it? Well, firstly, we need to be able to define the term hydrocarbon. You can actually be asked this in an exam. It's normally a two mark question, or perhaps one if they're feeling stingy. Now, of course, you would go on to say that it just comprises of hydrogen atoms and carbon atoms only. OK, then you might be asked to draw or represent one of the many different types of formulae that I went through in this video for a given molecule. You might be asked to name a molecule, either using the molecular formula, the displayed formula, the structural formula. And you could be asked to define homologous series or functional group. Now, we'll be using these pieces of information and knowledge later on and applying them to different situations. But for this situation at the moment, we're purely looking at it from the perspective of knowledge as opposed to application. Thank you for watching. This has been Cardinal Science's first video on organic chemistry. Keep an eye out for subsequent videos covering the rest of the organic chemistry topic. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to write these in the comment box below and I'll get back to you. Thank you for watching.